Hello, this is Sevilla I Love from Anchorage, Alaska. Hello, it's getting warmer here. I want to welcome you all to my channel. And just to remind you that we're here healing one heart at a time, one soul at a time, getting back into living and loving again and being able to embrace this new life that we didn't ask for. So on this channel, we talk about life after loss and there's many different types of loss but tonight what i'm talking to is those of you who have been in long-term relationships mostly long-term marriages some of you may have met your spouse when you were very young and you spent many 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 years together so there's different types of loss there's different types of relationship and no two are the same but there's different dynamics that go into how we approach the struggles and the barriers that are up against us when we're trying to move forward with life. Now, if you have been with someone for many, many years and you have suddenly lost them or they have uh, slowly left your life due to a long term illness, Anytime somebody dies, it's always an immediate loss. <laughs> There's nothing that can really prepare you for it, but there is a little bit of a difference. Either way, the end result is this sense of a loss of self. Because when you've been with someone for a very long time, your identity is so wrapped up in the context of this other person's life, in the context of the us, in the context of the lived experience together that you have literally very few memories that don't include that person who's no longer physically in your life. Now, if you're new to my channel, you know my name is Sevilla. I'm also a licensed therapist. I'm a spiritual guide and intuitive and I help people who are dealing with these types of loss. Now. I, if you'd like to learn more about me, you can find that out in the about section of this YouTube channel. And also remember to like and subscribe if this is useful and helpful to you. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and put your comments below. So as we have this sense of otherness, okay, we get our identity and our needs met through this sense of otherness in the context of all of the relationship, all of the experience that you have with your spouse, that you have with maybe the children that you brought into the world together or that you raised together, the vacations you went on, the fights you got on when you were 16 years old and when you were almost divorced when you were 30 and when <laughs> you maybe had a tragedy when you were 40, okay? So all of these different memories that come to define or feeling like this defines who I am. And so now that they're gone, physically, how do I not just live without them? How do I not just live with the, the, the sadness that they're out of my life, but how do I really, really live again? Meaning, how do you own this new life? And when is that going to happen for you to own the new life. Now, there's been some research that says, you know, when you have a breakup or, or uh, uh, you lose somebody in your life, that it's going to take half the amount of time that you were together to get over it. <laughs> okay. What's get over it mean when you've been widowed? I don't even know what that means. But there is a moving forward. It is this and that. Do you hear me? It is this, your story, up until the point that they left your world. And that, meaning that world, that new life, that new sense of you that must needs be moved into. Here's the thing. We are all spiritual beings having human experiences. Now, this human form is yours and yours alone. It's uniquely yours and it is matched to your spiritual vibration and all that good stuff. And so this is your vehicle for this life. 
And what is, what are you doing with the vehicle now that it's got basically a new owner? And what do I mean by that? A new owner, meaning that the person driving this particular physical form has a new identity now. It's a different car with a similar backstory. Okay. But it's a whole new story from here on out. And so being able to, to get wrapped around fixing your mindset, not just fixing it as if there's something wrong with it, but fixing it into making it something new. This is a renovation that you need to do on your life. So you take the structure of this beautiful house with the good bones, which is you, and you hire those great HGTV people to come in and restructure the home. Let's make it fresh. Let's make it new. Let's make it into something that you now can live in that makes sense for the world that you're in right now. Now, if you are, if you've been widowed now, if you, you've been widowed and you're several years out or you're just a few years out and your house, maybe you live in the same house that you've always lived in with your late spouse and you have all the memories around you constantly, constantly, the pictures on the wall, the bedspread, the paint on the wall. You don't want to move anything. It is a shrine. It's a mausoleum to the world that you had prior to the loss of that person. Now, let me share a story with you. After my husband died, my stepdaughter and I uh, went back to the home that he literally built himself with his own two hands. And there was so much, everything that I knew, everything that I had, all of the identity that I had for myself within the context of that relationship was wrapped up in that home. Same thing for my daughters. They had so many memories wrapped up in that home from the, when their parents were married to the divorce, to the time that they were able to come home and reclaim that space for themselves again. And so, my stepdaughter and I returned to the home a year later because what I did was I locked it up and I said, I, I can't do anything with any of this stuff right now. I have to allow myself time and space. So I came back a year later and we were bound and determined to keep the home, to keep the family home, to keep the tradition. It was even on tribal land because my children are Alaska native. And so there was this heritage rights and things like that with this space. And so when we went back to the house, my stepdaughter and I sat there drinking a glass of wine and looked at each other and realized we can't keep this home. And it was a very profound understanding for both of us. And perhaps my late husband was there in spirit with us, allowing us, helping us, urging us, supporting us to move forward with the new life that we've been given, that we didn't ask for. And the reason why we understood and knew that it was time to let the house go was because that which we loved that made that house, the home, was no longer there. Now that doesn't mean that that discarded the other memories that we all had in the home, not to discount those at all or minimize them but that he was the heart of that. And without him, there was no point for us to hold on to that home. And we realized it was time to make it into something new. And so what I did was I, I sold the house and because my husband died with no will, I gave the proceeds of the house, or the sale of the house to my stepdaughters as their inheritance. So, there comes a time in your life after you've been widowed and, and, and it's no right time for anyone it's just what's right for you but if you find yourself struggling with moving forwards you just take one step forward you keep another step back and one step forward another step back you know you go on a date and you come home crying <laughs> or you, you actually let yourself fall in love with someone else and then you retract yourself because it doesn't you don't know you're confused it's not sure if it's the right time or space for you. Is Am I cheating? I mean, there's all these questions that go through your mind. The sense of guilt of loving again. And I've got many other videos on this channel that I really would like you to watch because this sense of, am I cheating? Is it right? 
is a really important question to address yourself when you're moving forward. But if you're surrounding yourself with a life that no longer exists in the way that it once was, the question to ask yourself is, am I allowing myself to stay stagnant? Is it just comfortable to live with the ghost of my beloved, even though I can no longer touch him or her? Is that enough for me? Now, in all of my spiritual studies for my whole life, in many interviews with people who have talked with loved ones on the other side through highly qualified spiritual mediums, many books that have been written on the subject, there's never been a spouse on the other side who has come back and said, I don't want you to love again. I don't want you to date again. Don't cheat on me now. No, they've never done that. They all want their loved one to move on and to be happy. And move on doesn't mean forget. <laughs> move on doesn't mean stop loving because it's an infinite bond that you have with that other person. And so in order to move forward in your life, you have to be able to compartmentalize that time in your life, that person in your heart. And your love can even continue to grow for them. It's not like you just put it in a stagnant box and stick it on the shelf. No, because they still exist in spirit and they're still cheering you on and, and loving you and hoping that you find joy and love again. They always do. And if you don't feel that, then this is your own mind, your own guilt, your own limitations, your own stories that you put up for yourself. Even if before they died, you, they said, I don't want you to date again. Even those people, when they've come back in spirit through, through mediums, highly qualified mediums, they've said, no, I want you to love again. I want you to be happy. And being able to be happy again means you have to learn a new way of being and learning a new way of being is accepting that things are different. That this new person in front of you that you may be interested in, that you may have already fallen for, will do things in a unique way. And so now you have to get out of this box that you've been in of your identity and allow yourself to start being flexible because the world is bringing you these new challenges and opportunities to be different with someone new. And guess what this does for you? This helps you to explore yourself in whole new ways that you wouldn't have been able to explore before in the context of the relationship with your loved one who died. Now, this isn't like, oh, yay, good thing they died. Now I get to do new stuff. No, that's not it. But you've been given this situation and now it's your soul's responsibility to embrace what you have been delivered and own it and owning it means finding new pathways to joy owning it means allowing what is to be as it is Allowing is recognizing I feel loss about my late husband or my late wife. I feel like I miss them. How can I create space in my heart for someone new when I'm still missing and loving and grieving my late husband or wife? And the thing is, is that your heart with its infinite capacity to love, we are the reflection of the divine when we polish the mirror of our hearts. And that divine love reflects infinitely. And if that's true for us, then isn't it also possible 
that we can love someone else in a new way, in a full way, that we can allow that other person to be exactly as they are, different in many, many, many ways than your late spouse. They offer new opportunities to love in new ways. They offer new opportunities of challenge to your heart. If it's hard to love again, that's okay. Embrace that too. Hard means struggling with the feelings, really sitting with them. I love my late spouse. I miss them so much. I wish they wouldn't have died. And being able to sit with this feeling. And I'm feeling happy again. And I'm really enjoying this other man or woman that's in my life. And I love how they make me feel. I love this cologne that they wear. You know, and you're going to have comparisons in your mind. It's natural. But to be cautious not to compare to the point where you're discounting or not allowing this new person to be all that they are and recognizing and honoring the new opportunities for your soul's development from the context of being in a new relationship with this new person. Now, some people look for signs of approval or, uh, you know, they may speak with their loved one on the other side and say, what do you think? You know, is it okay for me? And don't be afraid to do that if you have questions. If you feel guilty, you can reach out to a highly qualified medium. If you'd like a recommendation, reach out to me. I can give you one or two or three. I know a few that I trust. But you don't even need to do that. You sometimes just need to ask for your own confirmation. And sometimes it comes through another person. My sister-in-law, who also is now on the other side in the spirit world. But after my husband died and I had started to date again and, and I was in a relationship with someone whom I'm still in a relationship with now. And she struggled with it a little bit. She wasn't judgmental, but she was struggling a little bit. and. And uh, she had a dream of my husband who came to her. And in the dream, he sat down with her and she said, how are you here right now? You're supposed to be dead. <laughs> this is the funny thing about those kinds of dreams because you always think you're supposed to be dead. How are you here? Well, it's because they're not dead. Yeah, their body's gone. Their body's not working anymore. It's maybe they've been buried or maybe they've been cremated, but they still exist. The soul, the essence of them lives on. This isn't home, people. This is school. When you die too someday, that is home. Think about it. They're waiting for you. <laughs> They're going to see you on the other side. They'll be there to meet you. This is this is the, 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 a round trip ticket, folks. <laughs> this is a round trip ticket. We get to go home after this. But you have to spend this time without them here physically. But in spirit, we can reach out. And so you can get these messages. So Susie, so my husband came to her in this dream, sat down next to her, and he said, you know, I'm okay with Sevilla being with Sean. He told her. And she was like, okay. And it made her feel so much better. And she said it was so real and it was so vivid. And the thing about those kind of dreams is those aren't dreams. Those are visitations. Because in spirit, when we're in that sleep state, they we're not blocked off by our mind and our disbelief and our material world. They can come and connect with us energetically more easily and communicate with us in dreams. So she shared that with me. It was great. And I thought, wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with me. And every time I would dream about him, he would always come and hug me and just meet me with this infinite love. Now, would a jealous person do that? Would someone who didn't want me to love again do that? No, they'd probably come and yell and complain at me. <laughs> but if you have dreams like that, if they're negative, 
about your loved one and, and you're having a negative dream about them, that's not a visitation. That's your ego. That's the dream mind. That's your angst and insecurities and things working themselves out. Okay, so there's a difference. But allow yourself to receive a message. Ask for a sign if that's what you need. And then trust it. Trust it when you get it. And know if you're still struggling that this is you. <laughs> it's you. And it's okay. The universe is going to give us what we need, the challenges we need to elevate our souls to the next level of our own development. Okay? So allow those challenges to come. If you are caring for someone else, allow that to be as it is. And just don't expect them to be like someone else. Explore it. When they do something that's very different from your late spouse, say to yourself quietly, hmm, that's interesting. They eat very differently. They speak to me differently. This person loves me in a completely different way. They express themselves in a different way. They make love in a different way. They kiss in a different way. Isn't that interesting so when you say isn't that interesting you're taking away the judgment of whether or not it's a good or bad thing that they're different and this is so important to be able to accept this new person in your life for who they are and what they are and for the new gifts and benefits that they bring to your life and the new challenges you may argue differently with them <laughs> you know i know in my I was married, it, one, my first marriage I was divorced from, but we never fought. We hardly ever had an argument. And my second husband, the one I was widowed from, we fought often. <laughs> Very different. So allow him to be or allow her to bring these new gifts into your life. And just to say to yourself, isn't that interesting when you find yourself comparing the two? It takes away the judgment and allows you to be the observer of your experience versus the judge and jury. Because the judge and jury is going to lead you into feeling guilty. It's going to put you into that deep set of, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Who am I? What am I? What's going on? How can I love someone else? I don't I, I, <laughs> I get it. I've been there. And I still go through it. My eight year anniversary was just a couple of days ago. Stay tuned on this channel. Go to this channel and check out all the different videos that I have for you. And I bring out a new one every week. There's always a different topic and so many things to learn about yourself on this new journey. Don't give up on yourself just because you have a bad day or you have a bad week or that you don't want to get out of bed for a couple of days or you don't feel like you know who the hell you are anymore. And I don't care if you've been recently widowed or if you're widowed 10 years ago. This happens. Emotions aren't rational. And it's okay. And if you've got someone in your life that is willing to sit with you and be patient while you go through these steps of your grief, well, that's a good woman or that's a good guy because it's not easy being on the other side. But if they're willing to stick around for you, then you owe them your own self care, meaning that you attend to yourself first. You attend to your feelings as they are. You give yourself space and time, not to get it right, not to feel solid or one way about anything because you're not gonna for the most part. You're going to be in a state of flux, and that's okay. That's normal.
gratitude for your having that awareness that you're growing into a new person. Gratitude that life is giving you the opportunity to continue to grow by bringing new people into your life that nudge you just ever so gently, or maybe some are shoving, <laughs> but sometimes we need that too, in the direction of the new you. Because as I said earlier in this video, you being the spiritual being, having the human experience, this uniquely you body, means that this is another chapter in your life. And you don't burn the book because you've come to a new, cha new chapter. But you do need to allow in new characters as it feeds and fulfills your story moving forward. And sometimes it's going to be scary. And you're not going to know if it's right or wrong or good or bad. The same as you didn't always know it with anybody else in your past. But because of this profound change you've had in your world. This profound loss that destroyed and mixed up and hurricaned everything until you couldn't make sense of any of it anymore. When there's been a hurricane, you can stay and rebuild or you can start new somewhere else. And you've got it in you to do that. You can honor where you've been and it's so important for you now to honor the story that's in front of you and to know you can't predict what the outcome's going to be, but that you can make choices in this moment right here and right now of what are you going to do today? For those of you that would like more personal help with this, I do see private clients and you can find more about that on my about page if you'd like to contact me. You're strong enough to move through this next phase of your life and you're also so so worthy of new love and that it will never cancel out the love you had and have and will continue to have and will continue to grow for your spouse that's now on the other side, but you're still here and you get to live a life too because this is the one that you've been given to live.